My name is Tim Rhea, producer and host of Digital Health Live here at the Digital Health Summer Summit with Mark Stevens Meadows, who's the founder and chief science officer of Geppetto Avatars. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Yeah. So we're just connecting up and realize we're at some of the same conferences in Silicon Valley back when Vermal was out, 95, 96, back in the day. And you've been, you've had your fingers in this space for a long time. Yeah, I mean, essentially what I've been trying to do is figure out how do you make characters talk? How do you build little systems that you can speak to that understand you and then speak back in a humane way? You know, how do we really build the hearts and minds for robots? Yeah, so back then, I mean, this virtual reality markup language and 3D and things like that were... (laughs) We thought we were there, but that was still so long ago. Um, so I'm really curious to understand your background so people kind of know where you're coming from. Yeah. Well, essentially, during the 1990s, was here doing early website development, got involved in interactive 3D, started construct internet design, and then after that, what we were doing was really trying to build out space that people could move around in. I went off to work at some research labs and then uh, took a couple of breaks, developed a system, a little 3D character system that you could talk to, and now we have Geppetto avatars where we're basically saying, here is the equivalent of a virtual nurse that you can talk with that's able to then to read your emotions and reply and help you make decisions. Um, so we had Andre K up here earlier and the topic was Rise of the Machines, an explosion in the world of robotics. What was happening inside? Well, basically what we've got is a conversation around how do robots affect the healthcare industry, right? I mean, Google obviously has things like 23andMe. They obviously are rolling out this robotics initiative. And what we're looking at is how are these large companies collecting our personal data? How are they allowing us to manage what we're doing with our own personal data? And then what happens to that data afterwards on a privacy level? So robots are going to be having connected systems in general going to have a huge impact on healthcare. And, And for Geppetto, that's important for us to consider. It's interesting. I almost have this vision of robotics where you actually have a physical robot there, but then you have this avatar that is almost like um, God looking down at you, uh-huh. making sure you're, you're on track. Uh-huh. Well, you know, there isn't a lot of difference between a robot and an avatar. They're basically the same thing. You know, you have something that may be a human likeness, maybe it's not. And for us, whether we're moving a polygon or a servo, it's, it's the same command, essentially. It's a translate command. So, you know, what we really want to do is figure out how do we make these robotic systems, whether hardware or software, ultimately, how do we make them humane? How do we make them tender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about, tell me some stories. We're, we're really where you're like, oh, it's there, or we're getting there. Yeah. Well, one of my favorites is uh, a few years ago, this is in 2006, uh, we were developing uh, essentially a system that was scraping the web for first-person interviews. And, and it was this weird moment because we were able to capture... Uh, we were measuring the data that we were getting from these interviews and there's a frequency of topics and words that occur and sometimes with some people they come back very really clear definition what they're going to say they speak within a very limited range if you will and so we asked this Arnold Schwarzenegger bot that we made what do you think of gay marriage I'm Arnold Arnold bot and the Arnold bot said gay marriage should be between a man and a woman and if you ask me again I'll make you do 500 push-ups and we're like yeah, I mean, all we're doing is we're looking at, at like a probabilistic response. I mean, that's really something that he would say because it's measurable. Yeah, interesting. So uh, what brought you down here and, and what were some of the hot points? Well, it, for one, just the invitation, the chance to hang out with you guys, to spend time with Andrew K is, is super. Um, you know, for me, I, I spent the last 13 years living abroad and moved back to San Francisco now after being here in the 90s. And it's great to come back because this is an intersection of so many different cultures and so many different things. People from all over the world are working here, and so that generates a lot of value. And at Geppetto Avatars, we're trying to figure out how do we build a company where we have people with very different backgrounds. For example, we have the hardcore healthcare geeks, and then we have the hardcore tech geeks. And how do we get those geeks to communicate and make those networks that don't normally touch overlap? You get a spark as a result of that. Communication is a big problem in the healthcare space because like, literally there's a different vocabulary that the doctors speak, and then we don't, <laughs> the average population doesn't speak that language. For sure. And I think that mixing those words, mixing those dialogues actually generates new <laughs> sentences to speak from a semantic standpoint. You know, so, so basically what we want to do is look at the healthcare space, find new ways in which we can help people. Our, our last client was uh, for kids who were being discharged with asthma. So, for example, they leave the hospital and, and you know, they're like 13 years old. And they don't for sure know how to manage their asthma. And so this system is there to answer questions and to provide them advice and reminders. And and that's a a good place for us to start. And we'll see where 
where things go. We're in a number of conversations now uh, with with healthcare companies and with robotics companies. And so as we build these hearts and minds, you know, we want to see how far we can push this. Yeah. What's what's interesting is um, actually a company I work with is funding uh, funded a film uh, called Code Black. And it really distills down to just lack of time for patients and, and doctors to have a relationship because of all this paperwork and stuff like that. So it sounds like you can solve some of those problems. Uh, it's insane. Uh, we've, I've, I've heard a statistic in the last week that the average patient gets something like 17 seconds to speak with a doctor before they're interrupted by the doctor. And that seems absurd to me because all of the valuable all the data about that person is in them. And so we really need to build a system that listens more than anything else. You know, like first, I think, you know, we've got two ears and one mouth for a damn good reason. And these robots need to have that same kind of ratio. But it seems like the robots actually can have extra sensors that humans don't have, like galvanic skin response, motion tracking for eye tracking, voice inflections. What, what's going on in that space? Yeah, so our system is designed to collect not just the linguistic or semantic data of the words that are spoken, but also the way in which it's spoken. And so when you have things like prosody and tone of voice, that stuff can be really important. Then we also have the the gestures, the posture, the facial expressions. All that stuff is mapped out. And the algorithms that are measuring this are able to determine both the, the sentiment of the person as well as the symptoms that are there. And uh, on top of that, we have accelerometer data that we can collect. So we're just trying to lace as many sensors around the conversation as possible to really get a sense of what is this person feeling. Because if you look at things like rehab, for example, we're driven by our emotions. Like, I don't feel like going to rehab. I don't really want to go to rehab. And so if I've got an emotional presentation that says I'm not really looking forward to it. That's valuable data. Yeah, we have a teammate, Marco, who has to go to rehab yeah. right now, and I've gone through it. It's not fun. No, no, it's horrible. And so trying to find ways that we can help patients, you know, address those concerns is one thing that this data is good for. But it's also good on the, on the big data perspective, right? So if you have like, you know, two million people that are talking about a particular medication and, the, and they all begin to like look really afraid while they're talking about needles, but they're kind of happy while they're talking about pills, then we begin to say, well, maybe the best application of this isn't with needles. So you can help improve the service that way. That big data approach is, of course, valuable, but really there's another angle on this too, which is a small data approach. And the individual has this whole set of data. And so, Tim, if like, you know, you and I see each other and, and, you know, like a week later, we see each other daily and a week later, I show up with a black eye, you may be like, what happened? Well, that non-normative data is what the system can begin to collect as we get small data about the individual. Small data. So uh, you're a startup, and all startups have to have rocket fuel to grow. What, what, what are your needs right now as an emerging growth company? Um, we need partners that can help us get through a Series A. We've covered about three quarters of a million dollars in friends and family, and like you know, I sold some bitcoins, and my partner sold his IRA, and we just scrapped together what we could, right? And so now what we need to do is. As we have now about 35 people that are scattered around from Istanbul to Buenos Aires to San Francisco with a base in Milwaukee, we need to get uh, you know that hat passed around again to get us to I don't know, probably a five to ten million raise, and that will allow us to finish and polish and present this platform as I think it merits because we've got some great talent and you know we got to keep these guys fed. All right. Well, hey, that's Mark Stevens Meadows. How do people link up with you? Uh, GeppettoAvatars.com and Geppetto Avatars on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, take a look uh, for Geppetto Avatars on the, on the web. You can find us, and uh, we'd love to keep pushing this forward with folks' help. So that's G-E-P-P-E-T-T-O, Avatars. Uh, Mark, fascinating uh, conversation, and good luck with everything. Cheers. Yeah, thank you, Tim. It's great to be here. Thank you.